that's the kind of basis. Yes. So you go. Hello, Ranjit, and thank you for giving up your beautiful house for this conversation about um, identity and how we are gambling with identity sometimes in the 21st century. I'd like to ask you, the first question I'd like to ask you is really about um, why is this dialogue around identity in 2019 so important? Well, thank you very much, uh, Skinder, for coming to, to the house and to um, you know, engage in, in this, I think, very important discussion. Let me start off by first of all saying that identity has always been important to human beings. You know, it is the way they project themselves to the outer world. But in recent years, the whole question of identity has become much more compelling, much more pressing than it has ever been before. So particularly in the, in the time of uh, post-war uh, era, uh, when uh, we found uh, a number of, uh, large numbers of, of people who were once part of the colonial hinterlands of the British Empire, now coming home, almost like the chickens coming home to roost in the mother country, uh, it becomes an immediately uh, uh, an issue of some, uh, of some import. Um, Lots of things have happened in the world in the last hundred years, which I think also bear upon this question of identity. Uh, people's cultures that had been kept apart uh, simply because of difficulties of travel and, and finance and so on, have now become uh, close to each other. They have been thrust into each other, as it were, over the years. So, um, you know, cheaper communication, uh, air travel, uh, the, the desire for people to travel beyond their boundaries has created, in a sense, a kind of uh, multicultural environment across the globe that now begins to uh, put a lot of emphasis on who we are in this new world. When we were in a tight little compartment, you know, we knew how to define ourselves. Our uh, sense of ourselves was not under any question. As soon as we come uh, into juxtaposition with another culture, then we have to ask those questions. Who is this person? Who am I? And now we are discovering that there are many different ways of asking, uh, answering the question, who am I? You know, and, and my whole point about, about uh, modern identities is that they are not unitary. They are multiply constructed. They have many determinants within, within them, uh, within uh, the concept. Um, for instance, I mean, I can be defined by my uh, ethnicity, my language, my religion, my region, my nationality, my sexuality, yeah? my caste in some places in the world, my occupational status, uh, my socioeconomic status, and Indeed, dress codes and music styles are also determinants of identity. So, as the world becomes, world becomes more complex, so does identity. And as identity becomes complex, so does community, because identities and communities are inextricably tied together. There's a lovely term and reflection and comparison you create where you say that um, as humans, we are not nature facts, but we are artifacts. Expand on this idea. Well, you know, our identities are not doomed to survive forever. Mm. They can be shifted, and they are indeed shifted. We may not admit it to ourselves, but our identi identities are shifting from one moment to the next. You and I started off this conversation half an hour ago from a particular position. We are now at slightly different positions, and our identities have been, no matter how, in, uh, how minuscule, they have been altered simply through the action of, uh, of coming together in, in, in conversation. So we'll go away from here uh, with our identities imperceptibly shifted from where they were before. And I think that's the most wonderful thing about, about art, 
art and literature, poetry, dance, drama, they try to capture these indefinable, minuscule shifts of identities from one moment to the next um, and, and, and represent them to us, challenging us all the time. Are you really who you are? Have you become different? Mm -hmm. to what, in what ways have you become different? Which is why I think you know, um, uh, language becomes a kind of, sorry, I should say, art becomes an international language of discourse in a modern world where there are lots of cultures uh, shuffling uh, uh, for, for position alongside each other. We live in an interesting time where we see in Brazil, USA, UK, Italy, India, China, wherever, um, a growing um, right-wing, very nationalistic style of governance, um, which, which is kind of very anti uh, your idea of this kind of fluid, fluidity or non-recruiting approach to identity. What's your observation as to why that might be happening? Um, because we live in modern days. I mean, it's the 21st century. We've been through a lot as a planet, as a, as a, con as a country, as nations, and yet we revert back to um, very old-fashioned ways of defining and dividing. Why do you think this is happening now? There is a kind of a strange uh, human psychology that the closer you are uh, in your histories, uh, but not quite identical, the more you're likely to, to, to um, uh, find the other a threat. So it's what I think Freud used to call the narcissism of minor difference. Yeah? So people are, uh, say, you know, it may be um, uh, along religious lines or along class lines or along age lines, whatever that these differences are now becoming so important to people that they're prepared to fight for them that they, you know, and defend their boundaries with guns and barbed wire in the way they would not have done so before. A kind of a sense of restlessness, of unease, of a drift from their cultural moorings, you know, trying to uh, um, reclaim what they think they have lost instead of concentrating on what they, what they know they have gained, they are harking back on what they have lost or the feel they have lost. So that's the difference, I think, here. Um, in modern society, there's a kind of an anxiety, an exilic anxiety, which comes out of this deep sense of, of having lost something without knowing what it is. And of course, political, uh, figures will exploit these differences for, for their own ends and therefore create the kind of political climate in which so many of these countries are finding themselves in. And to help us along with this um, divided world is the algorithm, um, the online space, the data that's controlled in a sense by corporates really. If you think about Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they are big corporations um, that individually we are using and bypassing structures and systems, advancing ourselves in our communication and our information, yet um, the old structures still govern us. And is there something here to explore then around our identity through the digital prism or the digital spectrum? So. I think the data uh, revolution has made us highly individual people. It has moved us away from communities into aggregates. So we are no longer uh, a group of people bound to each other in some sort of um, uh, undefinable way, but just simply bunch of uh, individuals, a collection of individuals who are operating at any one point in time with no connection between them. Now, uh, 
but of course, I mean, social media also has these very dedicated groups, people who are just given to a certain, uh, follow a certain uh, special interest and nothing else. Is that a liberation or is that a, uh, a way of, of containment? Self-imposed containment, if you like. So you're not really interested in anything other than train spotting, and you spend all your time just doing train spotting through the means of social media, which gives you the power to do so. Now, I think the jury is out on that. Um, social media uh, will help us to um, um, get the information that helps us with our form formation of formations of identity but also it's a way of allowing into our lives uh, all sorts of information and misinformation that can be vulgar, that can be uh, misleading, uh, and that can be downright um, 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 insightful. I don't mean S-I-G-H-T, I mean insightful in the other way. Um, so I think it's yet another, another development. It remains to be seen whether it becomes uh, 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 um, an important factor in our, in our, in our lives. Uh, some people said years ago that when television and radio came along, they were not just simply a medium to, to, to communicate the message, they became the message. In the same way, I think, uh, uh, the medium of social media may well become the message in other words, the medium is the message. Now, that means our identities are, are um, going to have to be created within this new world of social media. They are fragile, they are ephemeral, they are difficult to define, and I suspect that they will become even more ephemeral even more transient with the, with, with, the, with the media. Even as there are kind of larger political forces at bay trying to contain us into more and more sharply defined enclaves.